music is like a friendship built on years of a privileged trust between two people that responds when it's needed the most. This is the story of one doctor meeting the needs of his friend in a very special way. When somebody that you know professionally, especially a surgeon, reaches out to you um, to ask, and asks you to take care of them, that's a tremendous uh, privilege and honor because they certainly, they know everybody in the operating room and know their skills. And so the fact that they, they sought you out to help them uh, is, is a, you know, there's a tremendous amount of pride that comes with that. So tell me about John Scott. But I first got to know John Scott when he uh, came to start his, his residency here in Greenville. Pat was uh, my first boss uh, when I started my, my residency program here in Greenville. I was, a, I was a young intern and he was one of my chief residents and uh, I learned a lot from Pat when I was uh, learning how to be a surgeon, how to be a doctor. Uh, Pat showed me the ropes. I knew right after I graduated from residency that I had diverticulosis, which um, is a recurring problem or was a recurring problem for me, where about every year uh, I would get an infection around my colon. This is when John Scott would reach out to his friend for help. Every once in a while I'd get a text or a phone call and, and uh, you know, saying that he was having trouble with uh, with recurrent bouts of diverticulitis and he was on, you know, antibiotics and, and um, finally he kind of reached out to me and said, I, I got to do something because I seem to be on antibiotics all, more, than, more often than not and I, I think I need an operation. Diverticulitis, it's inflammation of small pockets in the colon, also called diverticula. I would take some antibiotics, I'd feel bad for about three or four days and it would clear up and and I wouldn't worry about it for another year. How would you know you had an infection in your colon? What did that feel like? Oh, it was, it was pretty bad. I had some pretty severe left-sided abdominal pain. I'd usually get a low-grade fever. There'd be a lot of cramping. I'd get nauseous. Every time I moved, it would hurt. I think the, the, the very last attack that I had, um, it lasted for about two weeks. And uh, the antibiotics just didn't seem to work like like they had done in the past. I had the creeping fear that if, if, I, didn't, if I didn't have something done electively, uh, you know, I was gonna need something done emergently. And uh, the one thing that I really wanted to avoid was having to have an, an ostomy. A patient has to have the trust factor with their surgeon. Dr. Scott's surgeon was someone he was very familiar with, his very own friend, Dr. Patrick Klumovic. I trusted all of the colorectal doctors, but Pat and I, since we've had a special relationship uh, since, since I started, I kind of knew that, that he would be the one I, I was gonna, gonna go to when it, when it came down to. Did you know you wanted to have robotic surgery? Yes, I did. I knew that robotic surgery would probably be very beneficial for me in terms of uh, recovery time and uh, the least amount of pain after surgery. Dr. Alfredo Carbonell is an expert robotic surgeon who champions for the advantages and the benefits of this surgical approach. Robotics, you can transfer the skills that you have from open surgery, using your hands and using your eyes looking into the patient to do the surgery, and you can transfer that directly onto the robot because the robot has three-dimensional visualization and the robot has wristed instruments. So. In essence, it's almost like miniaturizing yourself and being inside the patient and doing the surgery. The question is always, well, how, how long does it take to recover from this? Do I, do I have to stay in the hospital for this operation or can I go home? And, and robotics has allowed us to do operations that I used to keep people in a hospital two or three or more days. And in essence, I can do that operation as an outpatient. It's a huge win for the patient. When they get home, is there any difference in what they can expect? I mean, I would just say a quick, a quick recovery, right? So, you know, less pain. These are all little incisions. There's going to be a little time to get back to your normal activities as far as your lifting and the normal stuff that you do. Uh, and you might be tired for a few days, but, you know, that's, a, that's, that, that's about it. John Scott's recovery was enhanced by having this type of surgery. I was back at work within, you know, five or six days, uh, which I was really surprised about. Uh, I can remember when I got home, 
you know, I was walking around and I was like, you know, I didn't even feel like I had surgery. Uh, and, and in fact, my wife was like, you're, you're kind of overdoing it. You're doing too much. And I, I was like, you know, I, don't, I really don't feel that bad. The doctors state that surgery didn't change their relationship. We, I, we were pretty close to begin with because of all that we've been through from training and, and being in the you know, same department for the number of years. Um, I guess had we had a, a complication, it might have changed things a little bit. But uh, We have a lot of common interests. We both like baseball. We both like golf. We both uh, you know, have tooled around with guitars. So you know, we, we've, we've got some things in common that have drawn us together through the years anyways. Has being a patient changed you uh, in your role of being a surgeon? Absolutely. I wanted to make sure that, that my, my family was prepared and that's what I like to do with patients and their families in my practice. Studies have found that doctors who have assumed the patient role show more empathy and possess better communication skills. So we now calling you the surgeon surgeon? Is that your I, official I, role? I guess that's the official role, I guess. <laughs> the biggest thing is what a privilege it is, is when you, one, one of your friends or one of your colleagues comes to you to ask you to take care of them. Medical school teaches you how to become a doctor and to build trust with your patients. Life teaches you how to take that trust and become lifelong friends. <laughs>